have you ever found yourself in a situation where you've got yourself a corner you send your big tall players up front and you go all right i'm gonna get a goal from this and the next thing you know it's turned around and you end up defending and conceding a goal well on today's show i'm gonna address the corner routine i'm gonna take a look at some ways you can set your corner routines up so that you can defend and attack effectively my name my name my name is Daljit. welcome to the show we just played a game against celtic rangers as dundee united we spent the majority of this match defending our xg was so low it was 0.06 at halftime i'm actually proud of that also i was planning on do a, doing a block a very effective block we managed to hold fast for a really long period of time unfortunately for us uh they had a lot of shots on uh shots on goal but only eight on target they had 23 corners 23 corners yet they couldn't score from any one of them instead it took open play magic it was a really magical goal i mean at the end of the day we conceded the goal and i was like okay fine but it, i was still happy i was happy with our performance and this is the goal of today's show on today's show we're gonna i'm gonna be talking about setting up those corner routines in such a way that you have the right player standing in the right positions because when we go into the game the first time uh the set piece routines well you, we gotta they need a bit of tweaking they don't really work that fantastically out of the gate and um well it's not a good idea to leave it on default are corner routines important of course they are i mean you'll find a lot of teams who play defensive football have got a very solid counter-attacking strategy built around a corner teams like liverpool have a counter-attacking strategy built around defending a corner it's not common to see sides go into a match without a strategy right so here in football manager you will also find that the ai manager has different kind of strategies for set pieces as well and it's something that we should try to incorporate you know into our game plan when you first start the game you'll be faced with this this is the default corner routine now there are, i'm going to explain why the default corner routine isn't it is it defends with numbers but it doesn't give you a lot of options right uh when you defend this way what you're going to happen what's going to happen is when the ball is cleared you really only have one player here helping you against a long shot but you have an army here standing right in front right so sometimes you are lucky you block the shots on goal then you have a player here and a player here which is still okay because you've got a player in the far post center and near post center this isn't exactly the far post right? this is the far post this is the far post so this is the far post and this is the near post and this is a central area now when i design my corners i find that there are three important positions that we always want to deal with in the game and these are the areas where we want to make sure that our players have jumping reach heading bravery these are the ones that i want to aim for and these are the three areas that these cover now interestingly enough you don't see anything here but there's a slot we move him here you'll discover the attributes that are required now the same attributes are required in this position jumping reach heading positioning bravery and concentration now the thing is when the ball is delivered in that area that is going to be the area that is the most susceptible and normally when i set up my corner routines i have all three areas set uh, marked however in the for the match against uh, celtic we were using a slightly different corner routine i was using this corner routine now this is even more funky because it's only got two players you actually only need two players i mean how many teams go out there with tall giants in their whole team not many i mean maybe sides that brighton might but uh there's only there are only two players here you only really need two of them here this central area should be taken care of by the goalkeeper so the goalkeeper needs command of area, area reach handling and punching right so if he doesn't have handling then he needs punching right so this keeper will command this area and if he commands this area then you don't really need somebody blocking him in that area now if your keeper doesn't have strong aerial reach then may, perhaps you want to put somebody here to give him a hand and that's why i did with uh, a team in colombia a while ago on fm 20 right because my keeper only had jumping reach as well so i actually put another player here 
Okay, so these are the these are the two main areas you want to take care of. Now, if you look at the attack routines, right, you will notice one thing. This is the far post. You don't have another zone here. But look at his position. Right now, you look at the um, defend routine. This is the position. So it's slightly, it's not in exactly the same spot. Uh, which is why some players like to put two players there. Now this is this is aggressively defending the far post. Right? So you've got two players here. Which is also not a bad idea. You can do that. And another variation of the corner routine is actually to put two players here and two players here. You don't necessarily need to want need to put a jumper here. But I actually have an, uh, another corner routine that I've always I wrote about it in my book as well. Um, so what I normally do is I have jumping reach here, jumping reach here. Then I have man markers. Now these are what I call what we like to call blockers in the game. These are players that will block the runs of other players. So when you have man marking, they need marking, they need bravery, they need concentration. They might need some strength in hitting. So that's important. Um, so these two players are going to stay, uh, going to get in the way of other players who are trying to get into these positions. Now then, finally we have go back. Right, this is the go back instruction, which is just zone marking in general. So what you want to do is you want to have Two players will go, go back here, leaving you with the option of releasing your counter-attacking team. Your counter-attacking team can have up to three players in it. Now, if I have two players at, at the edge of area, what this also does is defense against a long shot. It makes it really hard for teams to um, you know, build an attack here because I've got players waiting to block shots. And that's exactly what happened against in our match against Celtic, where we defended well over 20 corners on the day. We had a, quite a few blocks being put in and it was a phenomenal job in terms of defending the corner routine. So these, these two positions are going to be players with anticipation, acceleration, passing. I would also recommend adding vision here and decisions. Now what will happen is this: these two players, they will look out for the fastest player in your team who's got dribbling, agility, balance. Right, he's going to get away. Right, So they'll, they, what they'll do is they'll try and release him with the pass. Once he's released with the pass, he goes off. Now, these two players are going to work with him. As he gets up the pitch, these two players are going to charge up the pitch as well. And he will draw he will draw players away, at least one defender away or two. And then this opens the space up for these two players. And he might play a pass into the space or he will do a... You know, the, sometimes I see one touch passing between three players to go and score a goal. And if you've seen any of my streams, you've seen a few of those goals already. So this is uh, the way you can set your set piece routines for defending corners. Once again, you want jumping reach here, heading, bravery, anticipation, concentration, and positioning. These are the attributes you need for this position. Then you need man marking for these two positions, bravery and positioning. So these are the two players that need uh, to be able to mark the zone. Finally, for these two these two positions, you need players who have good, good anticipation. Ac acceleration will definitely be helpful. Uh, decisions, vision, and passing. This is your Speedy Gonzalez. You want to find the fastest player you have in your team who can dribble with the ball. Sometimes he's so fast, he's just going to make a beeline for goal and they will find it very hard to stop the player. But when your defending team defends with uh, two defenders, he's also going to put pressure on the defenders to commit a challenge, preventing him from proceeding any further. In doing so, they'll pick up a yellow card and that's going to be to your advantage for the later parts of the game. Because the flank that yellow card is on, can you can apply pressure to that flank with a focus play instruction and put that fullback in under even more pressure. Right? So it gives you a lot of options uh, for the rest of the match. Now, in terms of attacking, now I, I, there are so many options when it comes to attacking corner routines. This is it's unbelievable. The, the, there's so many guys out there who've got fantastic corner routines. So I'm not the only one, right? So I mean, I don't even think I have fantastic corner routines. You've got Renzi who's got very good corner routines. You've got Guido who's got corner routines. I'm not suggesting that these are the best. I'm just suggesting this is one way I do it. And to be honest, it boggles the mind, right? The, the number of corner routines. Okay, so here I'm going to just set it to default. This is what we have on default. And this got one of the craziest instructions in the whole game. To this day, I have no idea what it's doing in the game. It's called the stay back if needed instruction. I have never understood the need for this instruction because this player is actually in no man's land. He is neither, he's, he's not deep enough to help you defend and he's not far enough to help attack. So he's always staying, hanging around doing bugger all. So what you want to do is you want to make a decision. You want to send him forward. So some people do this. I've seen a lot of guys do this on, um, I've seen a few people doing this on my streamer showdown as well. 
So now this is not too bad because if you have two here and you have three at the edge of the box, you are defending against the clearance, right? So if the ball is cleared, you still have three of these players here. But if the if the keeper gets the ball in, decides to kick, it's gonna go here. And chances are, whoever's if I'm defending, I'm at, you know if I'm attacking you, I probably have two players back, or you know if I'm defending, I'll have like uh, I might only have two. Right, so if you only have two and I've got two, three players, remember the attacking strategy I had earlier, if I have my three players set up, they won't be able to handle it. You won't, this team will not be able to handle the defensive corner routine as this. Because I've got three players versus the two here. Right, so they're going to pick up a yellow card. Right, and they're just going to get carved open on the way to this, uh, this, this group scoring a goal. So if you have the fastest guys here and you've got passing, vision, anticipation, and vision decisions... Basically, if you have very good players who can pass the ball here, you're, you're sorted, you're golden. I um, mean, it took me such a long time to say that. Okay, so this is, if you wanted to do this for default, that's fine, right? But be prepared. These guys are going to concede goals if the ball goes over the top. So typically, the very, if you, there's nothing else you want to do with the corner routine, you can just stay with this and just, you know, stop watching the video right now. And you won't know what the rest of the great corner routines are like. So... <laughs> Anyway, so what you can do is you can put this tree here, right? Okay, and then we've got this setup. Now this is also a bit bizarre, right? Why do you have a defender here? You should put a defender here. This defender should come here, right? So you got near post, far post, and I'll tell you why. You have options for your keep this guy to do several things. He will send it to sh short, near, far, edge, and six yard box. This six yard box is already covered by this guy. And perhaps this one or two of these players, right? Okay. Then we've got the short and the near. Far. Short isn't covered. You got near and far is covered by these two, and you got age area is covered by these two. So yeah, you can leave it like that and set him to mix and hope for the best, right? That's one way of doing it. Now my personal favorite is to cover three bit to to lim to have more options. So this is my favorite routine in the whole game. Now sometimes I actually put in four because it doesn't really matter. I only need these guys to create havoc. Okay, there's one option you can actually ask him to stand in here. Uh, look at the far post, right? So now what I have is a short corner routine. Now you can also do it something like this. Right? So you got three back. This is pretty safe. And then what you do is you set this guy to mixed. You put your best jumper header here. And the second Jeff best jumper header here. You put a player with a uh, jumping heading here as well. And you know uh, he's just lurking because. What some what happens now is if you decide to mix, he'll either play it here, 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 or here, or here. Now, if he gets to the far post, he's putting a lot of pressure. Okay, so he might pick up a knockdown from one of the defenders. Okay. Now the beautiful thing about the short corner routine is actually this. Now, if I have nobody in this position, right, what will happen? sometimes is if you have two players here and both of them possess long shots dribbling first touch balance what they will do is they will do a tandem dance between the two of them he'll pass the ball to this guy this guy is going to go forward he'll get into this position right and then this guy is going to come around him or inside him or around him pick up the ball in in this position somewhere and he will take a crack and go try and score from this position and i have seen that happen many times this is the reason why i love the short corner routine because the short corner routine has got so many options if you play if this guy's got a good cross and he takes it out and his delivery is actually quite dangerous because now he can use if he's got he's good with both feet that's another great option as well so uh so i like to put a left-sided player here with a left foot right so he's got a left foot so if i want to get him to score goals it's always a left-footed player who will dribble the ball right both of these are usually left-footed players and they will just bring the ball in and they take a crack or they will shoot from outside the box or sometimes they just mix it up and they'll just kick it to the far post because a left footer here is going to deliver it to the far post very effectively then uh, if the ball is cleared it lands in this area, we have two players, right? This player should always have long shots on him. This player needs off the ball, anticipation and finishing. So he arrives late to apply pressure on the goalkeeper. And then when it's clear, we have these three players. Now, you can also make it a bit more defensive, adding a fourth, but maintain this, right? So if you maintain this, this is another option. Now, if you guys are wondering, 
Okay, uh, if you're thinking, um, am I going to upload my schedules, right? My my set pieces. I'm going to say no. <laughs> okay, but seriously, I'm going to say no. You see, if we just learn one thing every single day, we'll all be much better off than we were yesterday. So that's what I encourage you guys to do. Because one other thing about set pieces is this. If I give you my default routines and I've given it to my friends before and you know, what I've seen, they don't change the players. They just put the routines there. They go, I consider the goal. And I'm like, looking, of course you consider the goal. The routine, look at who's marking where. <laughs> so the routines are not going to work that way, right? So you have to make sure that the right players are in the right positions, which is why it took so much time to explain the attributes. So if you... I want to just generate the thought process in your head, right? To create some of these corner routines because they are a lot of fun. So if you are worried about conceding goals off corner routines, then just add one more player here and two more, another player here and you are golden. And if you want to score from them, well, you can do the far post routine, which is actually quite strong. Or you can do the mixed routine, which is actually strong too. And it's very fun to watch. Now, it's a... It's a approach I like to take in the game and I'm not the only one that's got good corner routines and I'm, I'm not claiming these are the best by any country mile right so I'm just here to help you guys out because I noticed quite a few people have been sending in tactics to me that don't have set piece routines embedded inside them I find that set piece routines are a neglected thing in the game and there's only one last thing I want to mention right so and this has got to do with defending and positions I forgot this now I have to switch back to the game now the thing about set pieces is this. If you set your set pieces up, you also want to think about one final part of the equation. One final part of the equation. And that is to make sure that you have the right player in the right position. Because imagine this, the corner has been taken from here and your defenders are swapped. Your right back is on the left side and your left back is on the right side. You're going to have to cross over. That's waste, that waste time during the counter-attack. It gets worse as you go up high up the pitch. Right, so... You want to make sure that your fullback is on the right side and the other fullback is on the left side. Now, I know about Liverpool and loving to switch it, but the game does not, you know, it doesn't do it that way because along the way, by the way, they will start, you know, swapping positions, do all kinds of funky things. Try not to do that, right? So you want to keep them in the same position when they're attacking so you don't waste time in the transition. And that's critical for a very good counter-attacking strategy. If you want to get the counter-attacking strategy nailed on, that's what you got to do. And so that's it. Uh, and I hope you found this video useful. I won't hang around too much. I'll give you a chance to go out there and try out these set pieces for yourself. And if you have any of your own set pieces that you find uh, are particularly fantastic, then please share them with me in the chat below. Uh, we will be doing uh, free kicks next and I will explain uh, some of the free kick routines. Free kicks are actually quite straightforward, so uh, we won't take too long with that. Uh, but I want to encourage you guys to share your ideas behind your set piece routines, whether they have been successful for you, with you. And if they are successful for, for you, you know, share them with me as well, because I don't claim to have the best ones. And I'm sure that you might have come across your own that are even better than mine. So once again, I want to thank you for joining me on today's show. If you enjoyed it, hit the like and the subscribe button. Stay in touch with notifications. I do stream three times a week. And if you hung around this long for me, you to hear this, oh my goodness, I love you very, very much. I want to thank everybody who are my patrons, the guys who watch the show without ad blockers, the guys who watch the show and, you know, and put in, drop in the comments. Every one of you, you've been absolutely fantastic. Have a great end of the year holidays. I hope to catch up with you soon. Stay safe, stay healthy. See you again. Bye-bye.